The Biden campaign amping up scare tactics ahead of the CNN presidential debate. A new memo reading, quote, the American people will see two distinct visions for the future on stage in Atlanta. President Biden's vision where freedoms are protected and all Americans have a fair shot. And Donald Trump's dark vision where he will serve as a dictator on day one. But Atlanta voters might not be on the same page. Our next guest went viral with her unforgettable show of support for Trump back in April at Chick-fil-A. So I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Thank we support you. you. Uh, we support love you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. Please do. <laughs> Conserve the Culture founder, Michaela Montgomery, joins us now. Hey, Michaela. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. You're an Atlanta voter, and you're voting for Trump. You're supporting him. Why? Absolutely. I think Trump is the best candidate that we have out right now. And considering that I've lived through a Trump presidency and a Biden presidency, I've had the option of staying the way things are or going back to the way things were. I'm definitely ready to make America great again. OK, what did you think when the media was trying to say, oh, you just happened to be at that Chick-fil-A, you stumbled into him, he bought you milkshakes, you weren't really supposed to be there? I think that's kind of ridiculous because, number one, you should fact check first. Um, I got a call the night before telling me that President Trump was going to be at Chick-fil-A, and I was super excited to be there, and I got the word out to my students that I also mobilize weekly, and they were also super excited to be there. So there was no, oh, we're jumping for chicken and milkshakes. It was, we're jumping because, oh, wow, here's our next president. <laughs> What are you expecting for Thursday? Because based on that memo, they're saying that he's only, he wants to give tax cuts to the wealthy. He's going to be a dictator on day one after that joke when he said he's going to close the borders on day one. Um, and they're going to, you know, pull out the convicted felon ticket. What do you think? Well, number one, I don't see anything wrong with closing the borders. I think the migrant issue is an issue greatly affecting the black community and all communities, really. Um, next, when it comes to the felon issue, I think this is a great opportunity for President Trump to make a priority the restoration of felons' rights. That way, felons can regain the right to vote. Nonviolent felons can regain the right to um, bear arms. Um, and we can stop felons from being barred from getting good jobs and, you know, decent places to live. Lastly, when it comes to the dictatorship comment, I've personally met President Trump. I've personally sat and had dinner with this man, and looking at how he seeks advice on things that he's not fully aware about lets me know that a dictatorship is nowhere on his radar. Additionally, Donald Trump isn't the type to go and just do what everybody says just because. So the fact that this fear-mongering tactic of a dictatorship being what's going to happen immediately after our election day in November, I think it's ridiculous. And honestly, they have nothing else to campaign on, so this is all they've got. And what do you make of all these scare ta tactics? You have ladies on The View w wondering if President Trump will kick them off the air. You have Rachel Maddow saying uh, he'll put her in a camp. You have AOC saying that she could go to prison if Donald Trump's elected. And now you have the scare tactics with uh, the latest campaign ad saying that Donald Trump wants to take away abortion and IVF and birth control. Um, well, we all know that uh, the abortion access debate is very much... I don't, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but that's another, again, fear tactic, because the idea that you wouldn't be able to make decisions when it comes to your own body just because there's a federal law in place that mandates when you can or cannot get an abortion, I think that argument is very, you know, very flat and baseless, because how is it that you even got into a situation where you would need an abortion if you didn't have control over your own body? Um, next, of course, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember the second the part view, of the question. We were talking about the scare tactics from some of these TV hosts. Okay, yes. I think the scare tactics are the only way that they can... It's a kind of like a catch-and-grab thing. Like, hey, if we put out this headline that scares a lot of people, it's highly unlikely that they're going to do additional research on top of this. So if we scare them enough with this headline, then we can definitely scare them enough to the polls in November, and they're going to vote based off of this headline versus voting based off of actual research. Yeah, that's why these debates are so important, because you actually can watch and hear it out of the horse's mouth. You can learn more about uh, their issues if you watch them and not have to rely on liberal media uh, spreading lies. Thank you so much, Michaela, for coming on. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.